in listen only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andy Curtis. I am joining you today to present custom transfers and baseball, a winning combination. Uh, I've been with Transfer Express for 11 years now. I am the trainer for Transfer Express. And joining me from Great Garment Graphics is Jody Weiler, who's in the background. Hey, Jody. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thanks to all those attending. Uh, Jody is going to be the uh, woman behind the scenes. Don't don't uh, pay no attention to the lady behind the curtain. Uh, Jody's uh, going to be answering the chat box. Uh, so as we go today, as always, if you've joined me, you know that we're going to cover a lot of information in 45 minutes. Um, and I, I say 45 minutes sort of jokingly because it will be more like an hour. But either way, uh, Jody is going to be the person who is chatting with you behind the scenes. So if you have questions, I really encourage you to type your questions in. At the end, we do our best to get to a couple of those if I uh, don't answer them as we go. Um, and uh, we're going to actually just get right started here. Uh, if you've joined me before, you know that I love to start the webinar with a couple poll questions because this lets me get to know who is out there in listening land. Uh, so, Jody, if you would go ahead and run that first poll for us. Yep, and it is, what percentage of your business is baseball, softball? And uh, if you hadn't noticed from the title today, the uh, subject matter is custom transfers and baseball. So, uh, this helps me to know exactly who we're dealing with. Hopefully, hopefully this is a high percentage, uh, especially with this subject matter. <laughs> okay. Um... So we're going to close the poll now, and let's see what our results are. Hmm. It's kind of even across the board there, Andy. Oh, no, mostly just about a quarter of people's business, and we have a lot of newbies, too, about 20% wow. of our attendees, yeah. Okay, all right, well, gosh, good. Well, that's good. I, I, you know what? One of our goals here at Transfer Express in the Customer Service Department is to uh, help you guys out there in listening land succeed by educating you, so I can certainly educate you on this topic. And we've got one more poll question, if you would be so kind, Jody. It looks like that's the only poll question I have, Andy, was what percentage of your baseball? Ooh, phooey. Okay. I apologize. I thought we had to. Well, there you have it, guys. All right. So let's, without further ado, go ahead and get into it then uh, with 25% uh, um, of your business being, uh, being baseball. I think we can certainly expound upon this topic just a little bit. Um, the goal here today, guys, is in the next 45 minutes, we're going to cover just about anything you could think of in terms of uh, custom transfers in baseball, leagues, uniforms, all that stuff. I'm going to do my best to cover all of this information. As always, please ask questions as we go. Uh, so, shall we get started? Um, if we're going to talk about baseball, then the very first thing we need to talk about, of course, is the uniform. Um, not just, obviously, I mean, that's what we all do. We do the decorating and garment uh, ID for textiles and all that stuff, but let's actually talk about the garment itself for a second. Uh, a typical baseball jersey is cotton, uh, polyester, or a blend of the two. Now, I point this out because it, it amazes me how over the last 10 years, these aren't your, these aren't your grandpa's baseball uniforms anymore. Uh, it's, it's funny how even just the 11 years that I've been in this industry, how much things have changed. Um, baseball jerseys are now not only the button-down jerseys like we're used to seeing. Some of them still are, but there's plenty of leagues that have gone to, uh, depending on the age of the kids, of course, too, just T-shirts. Or another thing that's really popular, I know, is leagues actually using Under Armour as the jersey. So it's sort of funny to see where things have gone and how things have evolved. But the typical baseball jersey is still cotton or a uh, cotton poly blend. Um, the most popular layout for leagues is a script and tail, and uh, actually in a couple slides here we're going to go into that in more detail on uh, the very next slide. But uh, the most popular design is still the old script and tail standby, so if you're ever uh, trying to come up with a baseball design and you're just needing something that's uh, old, tried and true, that's, uh, that's definitely the script and tail design. Not that this stops us from coming out with uh, tons of new baseball designs every year like you see in the example here one of our uh, fantastic Great Dane Graphics 
baseball designs, courtesy of Dan Clement. Um, and then digital and screen printed transfers can both be used on baseball uniforms. It all depends on the number of colors you're printing, the number of pieces you need, and the size. Uh, when you call into Transfer Express, we'll always help guide you. Um, it all depends on what you're looking for, what your customer is looking for. If somebody is looking for some kind of high concept baseball jersey where they're using all sorts of colors and designs, then perhaps we do need to go the direction of digital. Um, if you're looking for something more traditional, you've got one or two colors, that's when we go the direction of screen print. The reps will always help guide you. In this case, the example you're seeing here is a, a t-shirt with just a screen printed design on it, one of our standard designs out of our idea book. And of course, the idea here, guys, the, what we do here at Transfer Express is we pre-make all of these baseball designs, not just baseball, but everything else too. We pre-make all these designs for you. Uh, we put them together so then you can choose the design, change the text, and change it as you like to suit your needs, and uh, choose it, change it, wear it. That's that's what we say here. So. Notice how the design started as Compton Baseball 2013, changed the Compton to Wildcats, got rid of the 2013 in the example there, left baseball the same, made it three colors, blue, red, and silver, and bam, there you have it. So, um, so let's go ahead and move on. We talked about what the most popular designs were. Let's actually show them to you. I found this list really interesting, actually. Um, we uh, had some bets in the office on what was going to be the most popular designs, and it's it's sort of funny to see which ones ended up winning. Uh, they're just about the ones we all expected. Uh, the script and tail, man, is still the most popular baseball designs. Now, these, keep in mind these numbers are based off of um, our sales here at Transfer Express. These are the layouts that sell the most. These are the ones that are used uh, every year. Um, I can honestly say that in the 11 years that I have worked here uh, during baseball season, I see layout QAL 256 in my sleep. Um, <laughs> that's just sort of how it goes here, uh, baseball season being what it is and all. But these are the five most popular baseball layouts with Transfer Express. These are the designs that we sell the most often. Now, uh, I'm sure that you're probably scrambling for a pen and paper or you're wanting to write these down for further reference. If you do find yourself wanting a copy of this webinar, keep in mind that a PDF of the slides will be available on greatgarmentgraphics.com uh, after the webinar is finished uh, today or tomorrow. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, in the meantime, though, these are the five most popular layouts. So there you have it. If you're looking for some old standby, something you know that a baseball team will like because they're traditional, then here you go. Keep in mind, though, of course, like I said, this does not stop us from creating new and improved and hip designs every year. So if you're looking for something that's not tried and true, if you're looking for something that is different, unique, to strike out on your own something different, uh, our baseball section of our idea book is chock full of those. Also, transferexpress.com, all of our designs are up on our website, too, so please feel free to hit those areas and look at those layouts, too. All right, let's talk about numbers. You cannot have a baseball jersey without numbers, uh, even the ones that aren't using standard jerseys anymore, the people who have gone to t-shirts or Under Armour. Everybody needs, everybody needs numbers. Um, now, typically, a number for a back of a baseball jersey is 6-inch for youth and 8-inch for adult. Now, I say typically because, of course, you're going to have some weird leagues out there that see it differently. They like to do their sizes a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Maybe you've got a, a team of bigger guys. Maybe their numbers are 10 inches. Who knows? But typically, for the most part, youth are going to have 6-inch numbers on the back of their garments. Adults are going to have 8-inch numbers on the back of their garments. Now, these are not your grandpa's numbers either. I, we talked about how baseball jerseys are changing. Numbers are changing, too. Uh, when I started here many years ago, if you were going to do names and numbers on the back of a jersey, usually you had the screen print on one side, but then names and numbers ended up having to be a uh, film product on the other side. Uh, for those of you who are looking for everything to match, to have screen printing on all sides of the garment, uh, that is what we offer here. You can get your names and numbers to be the same screen printed inks and colors as you apply to the front of their jersey, so you don't have to have different textured, uh, different textured products on the front and the back. Um, so that's important to point out to you. And please keep in mind, this is a really popular question, I know. All of these numbers and names that you're going to see today, all of these bits and pieces, these are all screen print inks. So this is all plastisol. It's all the stuff you're used to seeing. So even the names and the numbers are screen printed. Um, 
the uh, baseball jerseys do sometimes often uh, offer a four inch number on the front as well, especially with the script and tail. If you think about it, this makes sense. The script and tail designs are uh, usually around 11 inches wide, six inches tall, so they're sort of wide short. You have enough room to put a four inch number if that's what your league so chooses to do. And then uh, another thing to point out to you folks that our numbers and names, because they are all the same product, our numbers and names can all be applied at the same time. So when you are lining up your numbers, uh, for example, in the top right-hand corner of my screen there, you see the picture of Powers, the uh, jersey where we've got a hand there peeling a number five. Um, that was all pressed at the same time. You lay your number down, your two numbers, you lay your name on top of them. The paper that everything comes on is all pre-spaced, so you don't have to bust out a T-square or a ruler or anything like that. You simply line up the pieces of paper. Uh, press it and then peel the three pieces, a piece of paper for the name and then two pieces for the two numbers. So very simple stuff. Um, our numbers are the fastest way to number a jersey in the baseball industry. We challenge you to find a quicker way. So, um, And uh, just a little shout out here. You notice that at the bottom left of my screen, I have an example there of a number eight. That bottom left of my screen there is the brand new kit on the block. This is our new style of numbers that came out for 2013 called Champ Air. Champ Air is kind of cool because it gives you a mesh look, uh, but what's actually neat is that it's, there's a functional purpose. It's not just the look of mesh. Because the number is mesh like that, the jersey is more breathable. The heat and the moisture, because uh, we all know oh, playing sports is going to make you sweat, and uh, instead of that heat being retained, that heat is actually going to be able to escape through through the mesh there, through that mesh look, instead of having a solid blob of ink there. So. Uh, functional on top of cool looking. So uh, the Champ Air numbers do come in one and two colors. So if you're interested, please do give us a holler. The reps have no problem sending out some samples to you. Uh, now here's what's really cool. Uh, over the years, we have sought to make number ordering as easy as possible for everybody out there. Because let's face it, sometimes numbers are a pain in the butt, especially when you're doing a whole league of numbers. You have to sit there and figure out uh, how many ones, how many twos, how many threes, and that's that's not fun. We all know that. Um, what we've done here at Transfer Express is we have made a number calculator, uh, not just a number calculator though. We have made four different number calculators for you. Um, I'm not going to take the time to go over every single number calculator here in the webinar, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just for the sake of showing you what I'm talking about, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to pop out to our website uh, so I can show you our different calculators. So here we are at transferexpress.com. And here's how easy it is to get to our number calculator. You notice there's that red bar that runs across the top of our website there. That red bar has home, heat applied transfers, names and numbers. I'm going to bring my mouse over to names and numbers, and I'm just going to hover over names and numbers. I'm not going to click on it, actually. I hover over names and numbers, and it pops up this little menu. And off to the right-hand column, there is a link that says Number and Letter Calculation Tool. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And voila, here's our number calculators. This is how we've made it as easy as possible. Uh, there are a couple different links here. The first one is I know how many names and numbers I need, or letters and numbers, rather. I know how many letters and numbers I need. Uh, for those of you who are the overachievers in the crowd who have done the counting out and figured out how many you need of every number, there you have it. Uh, for those of you who aren't the overachievers where you're looking for a little help, that's where the uh, three bottom links come into play. Um, there is a link for I have a list of names and numbers. There is a link for I have a number range. And there is a link for I know how many of each digit I need, uh, but I didn't figure out how many packs I need. So depending on what your situation is, you can click on one of these four calculators to do your dirty work for you. Uh, we're going to pop back to the webinar here because I have some screenshots. So. Um, the example I'm going to show you here in the webinar is the range calculator. So in this case, uh, we have a range of numbers. I have uh, five teams that I'm doing, and the teams are all 1 through 15, uh, which is pretty simple stuff, but I, I just I don't really know how many packs I need. So uh, the 
on the left hand side you see the screen that would come up when you click on the sequentially numbered team calculator. Uh, it actually flat out gives you the label there. Here's where you put your number of teams. Here's where you put your starting player number. Here's where you put your ending player number. And then uh, underneath there, it's asking us what style of number you're looking for. We've chosen in the example champ six inch white, which is, by the way, our most popular size and color of number. Um, the uh, calculate button then produces the screen that you see on the right hand side. Uh, once you hit calculate, it tells you here's how many packs of zeros, here's how many packs of ones, packs of twos, packs of threes, and so forth. And if you go to the very bottom of that right-hand side of the screen, this very bottom area here, you'll notice what it's done is it actually has broken down. Uh, we offer numbers in three different ways. You can order individual packs, you can order express packs, and you can order number kits. Uh, each different way of ordering it will provide you with a certain number of numbers. Um, they all have their pluses and minuses, and in this case, the calculator is actually showing you which one is best. So I could order 21 packs of numbers, 21 of our five packs, or I could order three express packs, or I could order one kit, and the prices are listed right down there below, so I can make the most economical decision. So definitely a fun tool, uh, and now with our new website design, it's easier to get to than it ever has been. It was sort of buried before on our old website. Now it's uh, right out front there. So I encourage you that when you're looking to do your numbers to pop out to our number calculator and help figure it out. And of course, if you need help, if you're a little bit confused by the number calculator situation, our staff is always more than willing to help you out. You give us a call and say, help me. Uh, but so this is how we're making numbers even easier for you to order. Uh, now, you can't have numbers without names. This sort of goes in hand in hand, uh, not just baseball, of course, but all sports. But here at Transfer Express, we offer two ways for you to do names on the back of your jerseys. On the left-hand side, you see the pre-spaced name. On the right-hand side, you see individual letters. Uh, now, we do offer both methods. Um, the pre-spaced names are far more popular than the individual letters. The individual letters that you see on the right-hand side there, uh, we don't sell packs of each individual letter like you might be used to from some of our sister companies like Stalls 80 Direct. Instead, we sell sheets of the alphabet. So we don't actually have the ability to give you packs of A's, packs of B's. Um, I have a clever solution for that problem I'm going to show you on the next slide. but. Um, the idea is you take your sheet of letters, and like you see the photograph there of the hand, you take your sheet of letters, you peel off the letter you'd like to have, you set it down on the garment, cover it with a piece of paper, and press. Now I know you're sitting there asking yourself, why would I bother? What is the point of having these peel and press letters if I can get pre-spaced letters? The point is uh, not necessarily for the team jerseys. Uh, if you're going to do a, a whole team worth of jerseys, maybe you do get the pre-spaced letters. But when you go to that uh, baseball tournament later in the year and you're selling tournament shirts, wouldn't it be snazzy if you could offer the ability to add a kid's name to his tournament shirt for an extra, uh, say, $2? And um, that's a great way to use the peel and press letters. You can sit there, peel the kid's name right there, line them up, press them, and there you go. You just added a $2 value. And I'm sort of pulling these numbers out of the air here, but you get the idea. Um, so two different ways that we do the names. Let's go ahead and expand on the pre-spaced names just a little bit, though, since this is, this is the more popular way to do it. And as a little side note, we have expanded our pre-spaced name offering this year, so it's definitely worth some conversation. Uh, Pre-spaced player names come in straight, arch, or vertical. Um, and vertical, of course, is if you have, uh, maybe you're doing warm-up gear for the baseball team, maybe you're doing warm-up sweatpants or something to that effect, and you want to put their name down the leg, totally doable. Or hoodies, we all know how the high schoolers love their hoodies. Maybe it's kind of cool if you put the baseball player's name down his sleeve. So that's the point of the vertical names. Uh, the names come in uh, different heights, one two, two and a half, or three inches tall. And the new feature this year is there are five fonts. Uh, last year, if those of you who are uh, used to this with us, last year we offered two fonts, the old standbys, Hercules and Full Block Wide. Uh, this year we have added three more fonts to line up. We've added Vogue, which is the uh, Wilson name you see in the photograph there. Wilson is in Vogue. It's kind of a cool bubble letter. Lambert is in Arial, 
the new font Arial. We have all seen Arial at some point or other. We know what Arial looks like. And then if you look at the duffel bag in my picture there, the name Thompson, that is Impress. A uh, really fun font there. Still easy to read, still sort of blocky, but a little different. So if you're looking to spice your baseball jersey up a little bit, maybe uh, sort of get away from the plain block stuff. Every now and then you get a coach that wants to deviate from the norm. Here you go. Um, now, here's a neat little point that I can make. Uh, on the last slide, we were talking about the peel and press letters. So let's say you do that. Let's say you do baseball tournaments on a regular basis. You take your peel and press letters. You're going to use the A's and you're going to use the I's. You're going to use those uh, vowels a lot quicker than everything else, right? So you use all those letters. Now you get another tournament coming up. We only sell the letters by the pack, so you just think to yourself, well, I don't want to buy another pack because I have enough Z's to wallpaper the office at this point, right? What you can do is actually order an express name, but instead of putting a name like Lambert or Wilson or Thompson, you just go A, 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 just A, all the way across that express name. There's your letter A's. The uh, names come in the same sizes that the pre that the uh, rather the peel and press letters do. So if you have a pack of two inch peel and press letters that you need some more A's, order a two inch express name in the same color, the same font, Hercules or full block, and just fill that fill that express name up with the letter A. And a little side note: those letter A's will just as easily peel off of your express name as they do your uh, sheet of paper that the uh, peel and press letters come on. So very, very quick and uh, inexpensive way to fill in your peel and press letters. And um, if you have that one, there's always going to be those weird leagues that somebody has to ask for a three inch number um, or a two inch number, God forbid, if you have a really, uh, really small youth league, uh, tiny kids. Then uh, every now and then you have that come up, somebody wants a two or three inch number. You can actually do that with the express names as well. Um, it doesn't have to be a name. You could have uh, an express name that's three inches tall, our full block letters, and you could do a number one, space, number two, space, number three. So you could just as easily do three inch tall numbers with the express name product as well. And if you order the express names on our website, our website will alert you if you have put too many letters on one line and you fill that line up, you're squishing letters, it will alert you to that. So it makes it as easy as possible. Um, we always encourage our customers to get creative with our product. If you have some neat little ways of using express names in some unconventional ways, then uh, please feel free to share the tip. Um, we're always looking for new and creative ways to use the product. So uh, just some other things you can do with the free space names here. All right, let's talk about baseball caps and visors, too. Visors are also popular. Um, this is one of those staples. I mean, every, every baseball team is looking for hats or would like to have hats at the very least. Um, hats can be totally cheap for you. If you think about it, you're already ordering the front of the shirt for these baseball teams. Okay, you're already ordering the front of these jerseys. And most of the time, the jersey front is something that is rectangular. It's something that might be wide but short. So if our paper, if the paper we print on is 11 by 14 and your artwork is only 11 by 6, you've still got a whole bunch of room left that you could put some hat sizes on that same piece of paper. Uh, we call this a multi-image gang sheet here at Transfer Express. We certainly encourage you to do it. It's a way to get your hats and keep it cheap so you didn't have to place a whole separate order. You gang your hat images on with your adult size image. Now, I can already hear some of you old veterans who have been with us for a long time out there in listing land saying, well, yeah, but the more images I put on a piece of paper, the more you guys charge me for. Uh, that was true in the past. Now, uh, at this point in time, we have gone to just one gang sheet pricing. So uh, we do not charge you more for multiple images. There is just one set pricing for gang sheets instead of having uh, two to four image pricing and four to nine image pricing and all that good stuff. So. Uh, just one solid gang sheet price. Uh, but anyway, that being said, uh, please do note that caps do need to be pressed with a cap press. Uh, you do need a curved surface, a curved platen to properly press a cap. Um, when you're doing your caps, please, please keep in mind that you do not want something intricate. Uh, there's two reasons for this. Number one, you screen print, you're not going to be able to screen print a tiny cap design that intricately. Um, screen print has its limitations for detail, but number two, if you do intricate 
cap design, no one's going to be able to see it from the stands. So you're sort of killing the killing the effort there. There's no reason to put all that time and energy into it. If nobody's going to be able to see it, they'll do it. Um, so keep your design simple. And then a last little note here, um, if you're using a six panel hat, digital transfers will work much better. I would like to expand on this for just a second. Hats come in two forms. You've got five panel and six panel. Six panel hats are the hats that have the seam that go right up the middle of the hat, right where your forehead's at, the seam goes right up the middle. That's a six panel hat. A five panel hat is a hat that has a big open panel in the front where there is no seam. So you can definitely press something without the seam getting in the way. That seam is a big problem with transfers sometimes because if you have that six panel hat, you try to put screen printing on over it, you're pressing over that seam. You're either going to have that ink crack apart you're going to have that ink bleed because the pressure is all weird because of that seam. So you definitely do not want to do screen print. Um, if you're going to do it at all, you can use digital. But I want to tell all of you out there in listening land right now, the best, the best, best policy is if you're going to press on a hat, use a five panel. Okay. If you're stuck with a six panel, maybe your customer is stuck on that certain model, a certain type of hat. Totally doable but use the digital transfers. Don't use screen print because it's not going to turn out good over that seam on that six panel. Okay. If you're ever confused about the whole five panel, six panel situation with hats, we definitely encourage you to call our customer service department. Our reps can explain it, walk you through it as well. Um, if you're looking for hat suggestions and stuff, we can help you there too. So, uh, certainly call us and ask us. Okay. All right. Let's talk about it. I'm sure this is something that everybody's thinking about. Since the dawn of time, when the first uh, t-shirt embellisher crawled out of the primordial ooze, this has been a problem in our industry, is how do you do a split front jersey? What is the easiest, most painless way to decorate a button-down jersey? Um, every year, baseball season, we get this question a whole lot, and it's always funny to watch the new employees as they're trying to explain it for the first time, because this is definitely a, a process that's a little bit involved. Um, I guarantee you that if you searched t-shirtforums.com right now, you could probably find five other different ways that you can do it. There's, uh, you know, the old saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So um, I'm going to show you what we at Transfer Express, after much to do, we have decided that this is the best way of doing a button-down button jersey. Our marketing manager, Sue, swears by this. I've seen her do it. I have to agree. This is certainly the easiest way to go about doing it. So step by step here, if you're doing a button-down jersey, step one is to cut your transfer into two halves. Uh, usually you're going to cut it to the left of the center because that's where it's going to fall. My suggestion to you is to take your transfer, lay it down on your buttoned up garment for a second and see where that split falls so you know the proper place to cut it. You don't want to accidentally cut it in the wrong place and have some lopsided jersey. So uh, so first step is to cut it into two pieces, cut the transfer in two pieces. Second step is to fully button up your jersey and then lay it on the heat press, button side facing up of course when you're decorating the front. Step three is you're going to pre-press. Yes, with the buttons all buttoned up, you're going to pre-press. Step four, you're going to position both halves of the transfer you just cut. You're going to position both halves on the jersey, lining up the edge, okay? And you'll have grid lines on the back of the transfer to help make sure you're lining it up properly. Uh, once you've got your two halves laid down on there in the right place, you've got everything lined up, then you press, okay? Step six here. We're going to peel the release paper on the right side only. Okay, stay with me on this because you've got the buttons and the placket going on there. The jersey did not get a good flush hit from the heat press. The right side did because the right side is slightly higher. So we're going to peel the paper off the right side. Then we're going to leave the paper on the left. Don't touch it. You're going to unbutton the jersey. Then you're going to open the jersey, okay, leaving just the left side on the platen. You're going to hit the left side again because when we hit it the first time, it didn't get a good solid hit. Now that we've unbuttoned it and opened it up, now it's going to get a good solid hit. So press it again, peel the paper off the left half, voila. You see the picture that's in the top left of my screen is the uh, final product there. So if you ever have questions about this, I know I just went through it really fast. I'm sure there's somebody out there going, slow down, slow down, I can't keep up. 
if you're ever wanting to see these exact pictures, this exact breakdown, uh, the PDF of these slides will be available at greatgarmentgraphics.com. And here's another little tidbit. If you go to transferexpress.com, we have a search box that's at the very top of our screen at transferexpress.com. In that search box, type in split front, and it will take you to our blog where we have these exact pictures. I, all I did was steal these pictures off of the Transfer Express blog. Um, and the hands in the picture there are marketing manager Sue Wilkowski. So thank you, Sue, for putting this all together. Fantastic step-by-step -step, uh, split front button-down jersey instructions. So. Um, I know that was quick, so if you have questions, feel free to ask and feel free to download, go to the blog, get all this information. Here is a little tidbit that a lot of people who are new to this idea, when you do your first baseball team, your first baseball league, this is something that people tend to forget about. Um, some leagues, it, it shocks me how they don't do this at all. Um, uniforms, I'm just going to read this quote to you all here, uniforms are a huge part of our sales but I don't think the majority. I believe you have to push the other items. Uh, now, what this means is spirit, spirit garments. Um, let's face it, you've got little Timmy on the baseball team. That's great. But little Timmy's uniform isn't the only thing you should be making. Mom and dad need spirit shirts after all, right? I mean, what mom doesn't want? You know, Timmy's mom on the back of her spirit shirt uh, with the team logo, or forget the team logo because the team logo tends to be the uh, normal sort of tried and true stuff that's sort of sterile. Um, the spirit apparel is your chance to take the team colors, to take the team mascot, and do something cool. Uh, so the spirit stuff is where you can go nuts, get some really cool designs together, stick Timmy's mom on the back there, and suddenly. Now you just haven't done little Timmy's jersey and the rest of his teammates, you've done mom. And then dad wants one, and then grandma and grandpa, of course, too, because Timmy's on the baseball team. You get the idea. The spirit where is where you can make a lot of cash, because this is where you can get the cool designs. This is where you can get the neat stuff. And keep in mind, spirit gear, spirit stuff doesn't have to be just t-shirts. Think outside the box. Our friends at uh, Broder Brothers have a lot of really interesting items. You could do can koozies. You can do uh, laptop cases. You can do bags, tote bags, messenger bags. All these different blank garments make really cool team wear. And keep in mind that because you're using transfers, you don't have to go out and make all this stuff and then keep your fingers crossed and pray that you sell it. You simply have the transfer sitting aside, and as somebody requests it, you make it and order it then. So you simply tell them that you can do can koozies, and when somebody orders one, bust out your koozie, get your transfer, press it, boom, done. So no wasted inventory. So again, uh, spirit wear is just spirit wear is something you can totally take off with. This is, and every community is a little bit different, of course, but I, I can certainly speak to this. Here in Mentor, uh, the spirit stuff is super, super popular, especially with rival high school teams and all that good stuff if you get into uh, the actual high school baseball as opposed to rec leagues. Um, the local team, of course, the Mentor High School team is a big rival of the local Catholic school team, at least back in my day. Uh, maybe I'm dating myself, but the spirit stuff sells a lot when baseball season comes around because everyone wants to get the Mentor High stuff. Um, everyone wants to support the team. So just, again, keep in mind the spirit wear is where you can absolutely go nuts, and our designs certainly help you do that because we've got a lot of really cool designs to take you there. So. Uh, let's move on here. Let's talk about leagues. Uh, at Transfer Express, we have done our best to make ordering for a whole league as easy as possible. Um, and I know that's sort of a funny thing to say because when you're putting together shirts for a whole league, it can get to be a bit of a pain sometimes. But uh, we're going to actually talk about here how we make uh, leagues as easy as possible. We do so by using our sponsor sheets. If you're one of our old veterans, then sponsor sheets shouldn't be a new concept to you. You've probably heard of them before. Um, sponsor sheets, basically our attempt at getting as many shirts worth of stuff onto one sheet for you as we possibly can. Okay, uh, These are the different sponsor layouts. Now, these aren't the only ones. These are just the ones that I'm including on the slide here. There's a couple more as well. Uh, the whole idea is 
if you have a list of sponsors, if you have a, a list of something, you need uh, maybe team names even, instead of doing a script and tail design, maybe your lead wanted to keep it simple. Maybe the team, line, uh, the team name is just one line of text. Tornadoes, uh, Cougars, Bobcats, Warriors, maybe it's something simple like that. Uh, regardless, if you have a list of words, we offer these league layouts to make it easy. The whole idea here is depending on what size of text you need, and if you need one or two lines, straight lines or arched lines, we have a layout that will accommodate. So if you're looking at the very first one on the far left, QSP-3, it's the very first one on the left there, you'll notice that it is two inch letters and has six sponsors. So this is good if you have simple sponsors that are short words that don't need multiple lines and that need to be two inches tall each. Okay. And again, this isn't the only one. We have QSP1 for one inch sponsors, QSP2 for one and a half inch sponsors, so we've got a lot in between here. Um, all that we ask you to do is if you have that list of sponsors, or maybe it is team names, or whatever other things that list could be, when you send that list to us, please organize it by size and color and then style and quantity. Those are the bits and pieces of information we're asking from you. If you can organize it for us like that, we will make it the most economical way possible. We'll split everything up. We'll get it onto as few orders as we can. We'll cram as much on as possible. You just got to tell us the color, the size, the style, and the quantity. And here's a little tip. Every now and then you get that one sponsor, that one sponsor that's got to be weird. Every other sponsor is okay with having white text or black text, but you get that one sponsor who says they got to be blue. Blue is their color. Um, if you do have that one weird sponsor, you can always use our Express Name product. See, going, going back to that Prespace player name, different ways you can use that. Um, so the uh, Prespace player name product can certainly be used to uh, uh, substitute in that one weird sponsor with their one weird colors. Um, and again, my advice to you all out there in listing land is if you have these situations, make up your list of sponsors, your list of names, send them in to us with the color, size, style, and quantity, and we'll take it from there. So let's talk about some ways we help you sell. Um, there's always, of course, the challenge of getting the baseball team. <laughs> um, the uh, past couple slides were assuming that you have it, but let's say you're trying to get the baseball team. We make it as easy as possible by offering you flyers. Um, flyers uh, are just some of these little add-on things we do here at Transfer Express. Uh, the idea is you can download these flyers off of our website. They're pre-made. Uh, you simply download the flyer. You cut Transfer Express off of it. If we do, some of our flyers have the Transfer Express on it. Some of them don't. If they do, you just cut it off. Uh, and then these flyers are perfect for you to pass out to high schools, to your church, because we all have those church leagues. Uh, send these flyers to your local rec center or the rec leagues, baseball recreational stuff, uh, maybe the city, um, that kind of stuff. These flyers are the perfect thing to help show people what you do. Um, now, keep in mind, there's two types of flyers that we have offered on our website. On the left-hand side, you see two examples of flyers that are pre-made for you. All those designs are already on there. They're pre-put together. You don't have to do anything. You just, on the left side there, you just print those flyers out and go. On the right-hand side, we give you another type of flyer you can make. This flyer you download off of our website, it's actually blank. The idea is this is like a football fundraiser is the example in the picture, but you can use this flyer for spirit wear, you could use this flyer for fundraiser, whatever. Um, the design one and design two come in blank on the flyer that you can download from our website. Then you could go to our easy view feature on our website, you choose one of our layouts, you customize the layout, and take that customized picture you made, save it to your computer, and then pop it into this flyer. So you make the design on our website, customize the flyer, show the school the two designs that you can make for them, and then stick the price on there. Now, you see on the right-hand side how we've pre-populated it. Maybe you don't want the t-shirts to be 12 bucks. Maybe you want it to be 13 bucks. You can change all of that on the flyer. Um, but in our example here, we're just showing you that you can make up this flyer that says t-shirts 12 bucks, hoodies 20 bucks, colors are white ink or orange ink, and then the bottom half of the flyer comes in this little order form. So another way to show the high schools what you can offer. 
And when you go to a proposal, when you're putting in a quote, if you show them this type of thing, this is pretty darn impressive. If you're pre-ready to go, if you show them, here, here's what I'm capable of putting together for your school. In addition to doing your baseball jerseys, here is the spirit flyers I can offer you. So uh, definitely, definitely another little, uh, little tidbit just to help you lock in the sale there. So here's a couple more little hints for selling tips now. I have watched our marketing manager here do these for years, put together local baseball leagues um, for her sons and for different people, and it's always impressive to see the little things, just the, the little things she does to add the extra value. And here's a couple of those little hints and tips. Um, when the uniforms are delivered, make up a flyer, one of the flyers I just showed you a second ago, make up one of those flyers for each team to be passed out to the parents. Okay, so when you deliver those jerseys, drop off that stack of flyers so you can show the parents that you can also do t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, sweaters, uh, same logo as their kids, maybe different spiced up logos, offer the parent's name, the kid's name on the shirts. That's the whole point. Don't just deliver the jerseys, deliver the jerseys and a little bit of an upsell. Show them what you can do. Um, advertise that you can do add-ons. This is a big thing. I, I would love to see a raise of hands if I had you all in a classroom. How many times we've had this happen? You have that uh, that one kid that wasn't really with it on cutoff day, and he registered after the fact. So the team calls you up and says, "Oh, we got an extra kid, just FYI." And they don't always seem to realize that uh, we don't just pull this stuff out of thin air. We got to make it. Well, here's why transfers are the best because our price breaks are such that if you've got a team of, let's say, 13 kids, our price break is actually at 15, so it behooves you to actually order that 15 pieces. Now, you only needed 13, so now you've got two extras. Ah, when little Johnny joins the team late, you'll be the hero because you could offer that extra jersey at the same cost when your competitors are all charging a bunch of extra money because they have to make one shirt that they weren't prepared for. So uh, keep in mind that advertising those add-ons, that's great, that's fantastic. Uh, just make sure when you place your order, you're rounding up to the nearest price break, so you've got a couple extras. And our last little point here, um, offer to package the players' uniforms individually. I know this is going to take you some time. It's not fun to sit there and fold the pants, and fold the shirt, and pack it all up, but it's actually a great service to offer that the parents really appreciate, okay? And, and this is the perfect opportunity for you to do a little bit of advertising on that bag that you just packed up, and you actually see a sample of what we've done here on the uh, right hand side there. Um, in that bag, or rather on that bag, slap your company sticker on there to sticker the bag shut, and before you do so, slip one of those flyers inside showing the parents what spirit gear you offer. So pretty snazzy stuff. Here's a way to look at it too, folks. I don't know if this has occurred to anybody, but aside from just getting these parents' spirit sales, what you're doing when you show these parents and these organizations what else you offer, when they need to get family reunion shirts down the road uh, in a couple months when family reunion season hits, who are they going to come to? Well, they got their spirit shirts from you. They know what you're capable of. That's how you lock in the additional sales. Okay, the same thing goes for schools. When a school knows what you can do, suddenly it's not just the baseball team, now it's the basketball team too, the soccer team, the cheerleaders, and so forth. So keep in mind that's sort of the point here too, is when you're getting yourself out there and you're showing them what you can do, they're going to come to you for their other needs as well. So let's talk about some add-ons here. Here at Transfer Express, we have the perfect Do You Want Fries With That products. That's my favorite way of putting it. I uh, love telling our trainees that in training. Um, we offer a couple non-apparel products that are perfect Do You Want Fries With That products. Uh, helmet stickers, because every baseball team uh, wants better than just the plain helmets. You want stickers on those helmets, so we offer helmet stickers. We offer banners, because that's awful popular. I can speak to that here in uh, the beautiful city of Metro Ohio, our baseball team and different sports teams actually do hang the banners at the stadium, so uh, advertising the sponsors and who's on the team and all that good stuff. Window decals, because if dad's, uh, dad's son is the star player on the baseball team, he's going to want to stick that in his truck window. 
And then wall graphics. Uh, wall graphics are great for the school itself to sort of generate some spirit, some team spirit. Um, good for classrooms, good for locker rooms, all that stuff. Those wall graphics are fantastic. And again, they're, all these four products are very cost effective. They're good, cheap ways to get some add-on sales. Uh, fantastic little things for, for the team. And if we're going to talk about add-ons, I, I love to point this out to customers. Every now and then, uh, when we're doing orders, we tell a customer, oh, our price break is at 20 pieces. And somebody's reaction is, well, I really only need 16. Well, think about it for a second. It's going to be cheaper for you to get those 20 pieces, but think about what you can do for, with some extra pieces. Think about what you can do with those extra four pieces. And here's, here's one idea, just to point it out to everybody. Um, I know the slide is sort of making a different point, but um, those extra pieces can be used to do things like bags and tote bags and such. So just an idea, just something to point out. In this case, uh, we've got digital transfers where we uh, put a digital transfer on this, this coach's windbreaker, because we know how coaches have their own style of windbreaker. Um, we put a digital transfer on the windbreaker, but again, we had to get a minimum. We had to get a certain amount to reach our quantity. So with that extra, that extra digital transfer, we stuck it on the side of a baseball bag. Perfect, perfect option with these extra transfers. Um, so again, just an idea, just something to point out that you can always make use of extra transfers. You can always do something a little extra for the team, be it bags, be it jackets, um, uh, all sorts of fun stuff you can do for them. So don't ever think you're wasting your time with extra transfers. Just get creative. Okay, everybody. I... Um, at this point, uh, we're sort of wrapping up here. Jody, if uh, you're still with me there, uh, if there's hmm. any questions we can take before we wrap up here. We do have a couple. Denise was wondering um, on the pack pricing, is that the price per pack? And that was, I think, more toward the beginning. The pack pricing. Um, oh, 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 the uh, packs of numbers. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. There. You know what? If you look at the number calculator, Denise, the number calculator is going to show you pack pricing and then express packs, which is like a team pricing, and then kit pricing, which is like a whole league. So the, the number calculator will actually show you all of those three different prices. And Jeremy was wondering um, if there was a template to put a jersey on for the number and name placement, and or is it a met? measurement. And I just actually wanted to mention um, in response to this question that, Jeremy, you may want to sit in on our 28th, um, February 28th webinar because it is all about spring sports and for each sport where, what size is the best, um, the most common, I want to say name and number, how to place it, where to size it, and where to put things. So um, if you're wondering about that, that might be a great webinar for you to sit in on. But Andy, I'm actually jealous. That sounds like a fun <laughs> um, ideas. Ideas for next year, Joe. Um, actually, Jeremy, here's the rule of thumb. And now, this is one of those things where if you search it on the internet, you're going to find five different answers to the same question. I promise you. But the way we look at it at Transfer Express is the name and the two numbers. If you're doing a double digit, the name and the numbers all come on pre-spaced pieces of paper. So uh, it's not really, you don't really need to measure anything, no. Uh, the idea is just to butt the pieces of paper up against one another. So um, you take your name and you obviously start your name uh, about an inch, two inches down from the collar. Uh, we sort of jokingly, we call it three fingers. You put three fingers together and that's how far down you go. But you start the name about there and then you butt the pieces of paper for the numbers. You just butt those pieces of paper up against the bottom of the name. So uh, just one method. I, there's a whole bunch of different ways, and it all depends on what your style is. But that's, that's how we recommend you go about doing it here. And John would like to know, how well does heat transfer work on mock mesh and warp knit fabrics? On what knit fabrics? I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. Warp knit, W-A-R-P. Oh, warp knit. I'm sorry. Um, here's the deal. The... The garments need to not be heat sensitive. That is the first thing I want to point out. Um, if you have a garment that says do not iron, 
uh, that's something to avoid heat pressing. Uh, again, not because the transfers won't work on it. Uh, to answer your question of blunt weight, John, our goof proof transfers, polytrans transfers will stick to anything, uh, digital as well. They'll stick to all that different stuff. Not a problem. They'll adhere perfectly fine. But the thing you want to avoid is getting a garment that is heat sensitive because keep in mind, you have to press these transfers at like 365 degrees. So if you have a garment that the weave is going to melt together and change the finish of your garment from dull to shiny, uh, that might not be something you want to heat press on, not because it won't work, but just because it's going to ruin the garment. So uh, they'll stick fine, just be conscious of your tags. Okay, and Cindy wanted to know um, about the pressing on the split front jersey. What do you recommend to place underneath to get um, a good press with the transfers as she knows that you're not supposed to use pillows? Um, it sort of depends on what you're doing, to be honest with you. If you have a garment that is mesh, then all you really need to do, uh, my advice personally, um, if you have a quick slip pad protector, from either us or Stalls 80 Direct, that's a good thing. You don't necessarily have to put anything underneath. Um, if you're worried about the transfer going through the mesh and sticking to something, then just have a piece of non-stick paper from Stalls 80 Direct, have a quick slip pad protector. Um, if you're worried about the pressure problem, if you think you have to stick something up in, under there because of the pressure, then I would encourage you to go back and look at the step-by-step -step again because the way we're actually doing that split front, the way I showed you, you don't have to make up for the pressure. The whole idea is you, you actually adjust your pressure a tiny little bit at, at the beginning, turn your pressure up just a little bit, and the fact that you're pressing the transfer once, peeling the right side, unbuttoning, and then laying it down and pressing the left side again, that, that takes care of your pressure problem. And Jennifer wanted you to know that they've used your number kit several times, and she has to say it's the easiest way to number jerseys, hoodies, shirts, and whatever. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate having some backup. <laughs> and Corey was wondering um, if this is recorded and can it be reviewed later? Absolutely, Corey. Um, it is being recorded, um, which is good because I didn't say anything stupid this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is being recorded, and um, we do actually, uh, in addition to the PDF, um, the whole presentation is recorded, and you will find it on greatgarmentgraphics.com and our YouTube channel as well, so find us on YouTube. Okay, and the one thing um, Jeremy was wondering about, and I don't know if you have the answer to this, but he said at yeah, past tournaments he's attended in the past, somebody was pouring a liquid onto a cover sheet with a name on it and then putting another sheet on top of it to mirror it and then pressing it on the shirt. You know what? There are a, a ton of chemicals like that out there. Um, I, I am not well versed in all of them. I, I do my best to keep up as much. I as know. I I am industry. unfamiliar too. I'm thinking, what is, is that? So, I you know what? Here's my thought. To be honest with you, Jeremy, it sounds similar to the foil product. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously a liquid instead of a, an actual solid piece of something, but. Um, my encouragement to you is that if you're looking for something like that, uh, I would give us a call and inquire about our foil product um, because that can give something a mirror-like finish, a shiny finish. Uh, in terms of a liquid product, I can honestly say I have not heard of it before. I haven't either. Our industry is coming up with new and fun things every day. So I Always. Definitely. And I think that just about wraps it up. I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining us, Andy. Uh, thank you for having me, Jody. Uh, everybody, please come back and join us on February 19th for Corel Draw Session 2. Imprintables Warehouse is doing a great series of Corel Draw. I, I should be attending that. To be <laughs> with you, but, um, and uh, if you would like, I will join you guys again on March 7th for Kick It Up with Soccer uh, from 2 to 3 o'clock on March 7th. This was, I think, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the first time we've ever done a presentation about soccer. So mm -hmm. please, please join us. It'll be fun. We'll, we'll all learn together. Absolutely. So have a great day, Andy. And once again, thanks everyone for joining us. And you have a great day as well. Thanks, Jody. You too. Bye.